Welcome to the Papi Shulo channel. My name is Chris. Today I am going to show you how I did an alternative fix to some broken wings. Just take these broken wings and learn to fly again. Learn to live so free. Um, my initial... Initially what I wanted to try to do was save the front stitch because I'm not doing a full on stitch. I'm doing an alternative fix to make it look good and be durable, but not be installed the way it was initially. Um, so I really wanted to see if I could do that. And uh, it turns out I could not. More than 80% of this thing was torn. Definitely needed to come out. Removing the old threads, this is where I decided I needed to do one of those fake stitches uh, to make it look the part. However, it's not actually going to be threaded into anything. Ever seen uh, surgery on television? This is sort of like what a open heart surgery looks like. You just uh, expose what you need to expose and cover everything else. I decided to grab some too thin, some flat white paint and some satin finish and spray paint underneath where I was about to thread to make it look nice and clean and new. It was not really all that necessary, but I really wanted to make sure that it didn't look dirty or anything under there because once the threads are there, that's it. There, you see me, you saw me with the hook thread. The hook thread was just not going through. Um, then I decided to use the sewing awl, the stitching awl, uh, to try to do the stitching. And even that I was having a lot of trouble with because there is a nice thick layer of glue behind the threading. So it is very, very tough to get any needles through there after the fact. So what eventually I had to do was just score each hole with the sharp uh, edges of one of my tweezers. Now once they were scored, stitching wasn't too bad. This is a leather hand stitching needle. And what I'm doing is I'm going underneath a hole in front and then going back into the hole behind it. Essentially that is what the factory stitching looks like. The factory stitching pattern looks like to me. Towards the very end here, I decided to try to use that hook again because it's really hard to get access on the very ends. And also there's still a lot of glue there even after I punctured it. So it was kind of tough, but the, the hook needle made it a lot easier. Now I want to glue a foam backing to that fake stitch to protect the stitching and also to protect the other work that I'm going to be doing in there. So I just want to glue that behind the fake stitch, keeping the fake stitch in place. And real quick, another thing I decided to do was to try to restore some of that gloss finish on the thread because the thread that I chose to use uh, did not have a, a glossy finish. This is blank stencil plastic. Uh, Top Notch is a brand over at Joann's. 
I chose this because it's a plastic that seems to be durable, is flexible, and is easily customizable. Customizable? Is that a, is that a word? So everything needs to be perfectly square. So I am using a square. And I use the square to figure out where exactly the plastic needs to be on the wing. Then I marked it out with a white paint marker. And then I cut it into shape and checked that it did fit and was nice and flat in there. Now was the time to shave off the end of the existing wing so that all I had was the top part and use contact cement on both the piece that I'm installing and on that line of the wing. I want it to go underneath that line because that is where the piece is going and not over that line. Since both sides will be in contact inside, uh, both sides need to have the contact cement. So I put contact cement on the inside of that pocket and also on the other side of the piece that I'm installing and I hung it there to let it dry. I decided to grab some scrap leather and cut it into place just to give the piece a little bit more durability, something else to connect to, uh, just in case uh, it didn't hurt anything. Then I decided to rough up that side of the wing. I'd forgotten to do it before, uh, so we can get a very good bond. So I had to put the glue on again, no big deal. Heat up the glue, and then make sure when I install it, it's totally out of camera, so I seem mysterious. And I covered it up, put a little bit of weight on it, and let it sit there overnight. That's my daughter's book. So now here's the moment of truth. It's the next morning. First thing I wanted to do to make sure that it looked a little clean. And also wanted to give it some tugs in different directions to make sure that it was nice and stable. And it was, for sure. Now even though the installation was sturdy, I did not like the way the glue looked on the inside, so I decided to add some more. And now my signature $50 clean that you too can book right now on papi-shoelo.com. Please take a look at these fuzzies right around the border of the top of the insole. It's magic. I'm, I'm magic. Guys, stop wearing black socks, please. They just get fuzzies everywhere and it is a real pain in the butt to get out. You know, some of us have to actually bust out a disposable razor to try to get them out. They're that tough to get out. So just stop wearing them. Throw out, th right now, throw out all your black socks. Just washing the outsole is not enough. There's plenty of dirt on there that your eyes can't see. That's why I use cleaning alcohol. The black sock lint gets on the white laces as well, so burn them. Burn all your black socks. 
This shoe is 13 years old at this point, and there's plenty of fuzzies everywhere. Best way to get rid of fuzzies is fire. If you want to check out the final product, please go to my Instagram. That is Poppy Shulo. You can see it on the bottom left of your screen. Thank you for tuning in. Please like and subscribe, and uh, I'll see you on the next one.